In this video, we're going to continue our discussion on glycogen metabolism by discussing glycogenesis and glycogen regulation. So glycogenesis is referring to the process of synthesizing glycogen. There are a number of steps involved. First, glucose 6-phosphate is converted to glucose 1-phosphate by the enzyme phosphoglucose mutase. This is actually the same enzyme as in glycogenolysis when glucose 1-phosphate is converted to glucose 6-phosphate. Next, and as you can see in this diagram, glucose 1-phosphate is reacted with UTP to produce UDP glucose and pyrophosphate. The pyrophosphate is further broken down into two separate phosphate molecules to release even more energy. This reaction is catalyzed by UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase. As you can see in this diagram, the UDP glucose is used to extend the glycogen chain using alpha 1,4 linkages. This is catalyzed by the enzyme glycogen synthase. And finally, in this diagram, you can see the role of the next enzyme, which is a glycogen branching enzyme. Glycogen branching enzyme will take chains of glucose monomers and form alpha 1,6 linkages to add more branches to glycogen. All right, so that's glycogenesis. Let's now talk about glycogen regulation. As we discussed before, glycogen is primarily stored in the liver and skeletal muscle. The regulation of glycogen is slightly different between the two. So first, insulin stimulates glycogenesis in both liver and skeletal muscle. This makes sense because insulin is released in response to high blood glucose concentrations. It stimulates cells to increase glucose uptake, so that way there is lots of glucose in liver and skeletal muscle cells that can be used to create glycogen. In the liver, glucagon will stimulate glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis, but it will also inhibit glycolysis. Think about why. So glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis, since they're being stimulated, they're going to produce a lot of glucose. By inhibiting glycolysis, it is preventing the hepatocytes in the liver from using the glucose that is produced. The reason why is because the liver is the primary reservoir of glucose for the body. So when it responds to glucagon, the goal is to release the glucose in the blood so other tissues in the body can use that glucose. That's why it's important to inhibit glycolysis in the liver during this process. Skeletal muscle cells will respond to epinephrine. You'll recall epinephrine from the fight or flight response with the nervous system. And epinephrine will stimulate glycogenolysis and glycolysis in skeletal muscle. This is because the glycogen stored in skeletal muscle is for the skeletal muscle cells to use. So when the glycogen is broken down, it will also use glycolysis to use those glucose molecules that have been produced.